Crown V Nation. What's going on, everybody? You know, that was a long intro, but I was just trying to give you a idea, a further idea. Hold on, let me wipe the screen off. further idea on what was uh, going on here uh, thanks to everybody for your opinions your solutions you know and let me go over some of those solutions that I've done evap canister changed it two different times changed the PCV valve Changed the EGR. Swapped from my aftermarket coils to stock coils. Um, the battery is new. The alternator never gave me issues. This was actually a alternator off a different engine that was running perfectly fine. I changed the bottom half of the EVAP canister. I changed the plenum version, the plenum EVAP uh, hose brake booster holes um, and as I was going to explain to you guys this setup here I ran on my other 2011 with no codes like this none it did not do this shaking and all this stuff like this it did not pop a code for a misfire it did not I've used the same coils, you know, eBay coils, you know, they're simply a generic brand of the stock ones. I've used those many times with no issues, zero. I would either use Ford plugs or a NGK TR6 um, copper cores, copper cores only. You have to research. If you want um, Iranium and all that, that's cool. I went for a year-to-year -year plug change by going to the copper cores so that's why I went now on the other engine I did not have this specific setup right here with the tube but I did have this I use a stock tube with the stock um, breather holes on there but as I keep stating you know I use the same intake setup on a stock engine that when I would undo the battery cables and try to crank it it would do the shaking <laughs> spitting extra condensation out the exhaust it would do that be pre um, built engine now only thing I can say that I'm gonna have to just figure out but it's just it's one of those gremlins that I, I, I would I, I thought was gonna go away but it didn't you know I thought maybe it could be the O2 sensors um, I thought maybe it could be um, EVAP system, but when I unplug EVAP equipment, it pops a check engine light real quick. So I'm, I'm going to lead to myself to believe that when the EVAP stuff is unplugged, it works. I, ch I changed the EGR valve. I changed the EGR valve over here. With that unplugged it bump all of it it did the same thing um, what else uh, computer let me talk about the computer this computer is actually off of my 2011 crown big same thing and this would be the third computer and I know one of the homies had told me about the pinout for the map sensor but at the most critical situation a computer change was the solution and I've done that three times it has not stopped the fuel pump could it be doing that you know from I mean I have not checked the pressure um, the fuel pump to me was weak when I had the car um, could it be acting up Shh, you know I'm, I'm not gonna count it out I can't say anything because I don't have a fuel pressure gauge right now which is something that I need to get that way I can just check it um, and one of the other things I would do is check compression um, that is going to tell me what's what, what's really going on 
Um, I've already looked at the plugs. You know, they look pretty normal for a freshly start engine with, you know, when the rings are trying to seal it. I mean, you're going to get probably on average more blow by you know on the you know first couple hundred miles because you know the rings are just fresh you know they're not going to seal right away you know i mean it just depends so um i am checking a few things and um i'm going to spray a little fluid just to show you some of the preliminary results as you can see i just restarted it on a warm start it acts very janky. You know, when it's a cold start, she fires right up and idles all the way through until she drops back down. As you can see, she has just kind of caught herself. So, let me go over a few little car cleaner. As you guys can see, I did a preliminary test using carb cleaner. Sprayed the whole intake of the critical vacuum areas and preliminary, there was no, no changing, you know, besides what it was always doing. So, um, the one thing that I can think about is, you know, I, like I said, I'm not 100% sure, but I know on the stock engine, it didn't lose coolant um this engine i haven't you know drove it enough to go uh, it lost coolant but you know it's just uh the fight and like i keep telling you guys just because i'm going through this doesn't mean you're going to go through this and um this is another reason why i know putting out the truth that a lot of crown big guys go to the stock engine put a you know put a long tube and a silly loud muffler and 20 inch rims you know instead of having one built but you know um it's something that I did not expect, but, you know, I'm going to fight through it. You know, this is the lifestyle. Prime V Nation, I didn't come up here to give up. So, um, I'm going to come up with a solution. Um, in a little while, I'm going to get back with you guys on it. 
and let you know what that is. Um, I want to get a compression tester first before I make any final decisions on what I'm going to try to do. So, uh, Crown Vic Nation, like I say, um, any suggestions, opinions? Have you ever went through this? I actually f went on a, a SVT form of a, a 0304 Cobra that was going through the same thing with the stroked built engine and uh, he was popping these same uh, codes and um, he checked a lot of things like I did. Um, I have to go finish looking up the form just like I told the homie. So, um, yeah, you know, could it be a fuel pump? Like I said, I had to put the stock one back in because the aftermarket one was shutting off for odd reasons and it was everything was relayed up so could could the relay or anything like that to the fuel pump i mean i've changed a couple of those i don't know so crown big nation ain't no giving up it's gonna be a solution peace